fifth grade friends. I am here today. I am going to review chapter six with you before you start chapter seven. One of your, I'm sorry, my dog Molly is talking in the background. So apologize for that. Um, one of the jobs that your teachers have given you, Mrs. Stalinwork and Mrs. Morzinski, is to keep a chart or a list of all the problems that's happening. I haven't really seen too much of that in our Google Docs. Some people are starting it. In chapter six, we did run into quite a few problems. And so I was gonna reread the chapter to you, being that it's only a couple pages long, and I wanna help keep track of the problems. So chapter six, home must wait. The for si forbidden city of Plud, Max said. The nins have taken Princess Kia to Plud. Eric stared at the mirror. She seems really afraid. What are we going to do? We must go to her, Gollin said pulling a large sword from the wall. Flood is an evil place. It is where Kia's mother, Queen Rilena, fought her last battle against Spar. Neil shivered. You mean she's dead? She was never seen again, Gollin said as he slid the sword into his belt. But that is not the worst of it. Spar now seeks from Kia the Red Eye of Dawn. It is one of the three powers I told you about. It is a jewel that commands the forces of nature. I'm gonna pause. So <clears throat> I'm gonna pause here and do my read cover, remember, retell, and I'm gonna identify a problem. They found out that Kia is in trouble, that Lord Spar has her. Um, they found out that her mother is missing and they found out that Lord Spar thinks she has one of the three powers, the Red Eye of Dawn. So we've got Lord Spar wants the Red Eye of Dawn. Kia's mother is missing, which is kind of a problem. We don't know if that's going to come into play in this book. And Kia is missing or captured. Does Kia have it? Julie asked. Gallon grabbed a helmet from the shelf. I do not know. Even Kia doesn't know. So I'm just pausing and I'm going to reread that. Even Kia doesn't know. That means that Kia doesn't know if she has this red eye of dawn. <clears throat> to stop Spar from using the powers for evil, I cast them into the winds and charmed, charmed them to change their shapes. No one knows what they've become. So I'm going to stop again because this is a lot of interesting stuff. There are these three powers and they're out there and they're in some other shape and no one knows where they are. And one is the Red Eye of Dawn. But Spar will stop at nothing to have them. Max chittered, scurrying toward the passage to the ground. I fear for Kia, hurry, zut. Wait, Julie said, turning back to the mirror. The hazy glass showed a city of bright towers as light as sun as Plud was dark. In the distance, a black cloud of groggles was descending. Spar has tricked us, Galen boomed. His nins are attacking Jaffa City. Oh, I hope the princess can defend herself against Spar until I return. I must go to Jaffa this instant. So I'm going to pause here, even though it's not the end of the page, because more big things happened. We have another problem. We know that the nins are attacking Jaffa City. And not with, the nins are not with um, Princess Kia, but that Lord Spar has Princess Kia. So we have another problem. We have two problems in two different areas. Wait, said Eric, turning to his friends. Kia helped me in the forest and she was going to get us home. Now she's in trouble. I mean, we have to help her. How can we get to Plud? Julie asked Gallen. Hey, Neil asked suddenly. He jerked back, tumbling over a stack of books and hitting the floor with a thud. Something licked me. Leap, cried Max. He sprang up and landed in midair. The pilka, I'm sitting on her. Alan quickly pulled at the air under Max. As he did, a silken fabric seemed to collect in his hands and a creature took shape in the room. It was the animal the size of a horse, but with long white fur and six legs and a friendly face. It looked like a shaggy camel. Pilkas are quite friendly, said Max, and quite fast. Leaf seems to like you, Master Neil. Her, the creature whinnied loudly. She plodded toward the passage door and turned her head back as if to beckon the children to follow. Eric looked at his friends. We're running out of time, Julie said. Neil nodded. 
Plus, we're a team, right? Eric felt his heart began to race. I guess we're going to flood. So I'm going to stop and cover and remember and retell. So they had this, this creature that they couldn't see, and then it appeared, and it was a pilka, and it looks like a camel, a shaggy camel, but it has six legs. And it seems like it's going to take the children to flood, where they're going to help Kia, while Galen goes to Jaffa City to fight the Nins. So we are splitting up to take care of these two problems. And that's where you're going to start Chapter 7 today, called The Forbidden City. So as we're reading, as we come across any other problems, we're going to keep them on our list in our Google Doc or on our chart in our Google Doc. Right now, we said, if we want to go back to the beginning. We know one problem is the kids are stuck in the land of Druun. That's not their house and they need to get home. Secondly, we know that Princess Kia is captured. Third, we know that Spar is after this red jewel, this red eye, magic eye. We know that Princess Kia's mom has been missing. And now we know the Nins are attacking Jaffa City. So I can find five problems that we've had in our book so far. So a lot of our fantasy books are complicated and there's more than just one big problem. We're still going towards that big climax, but we have all these problems on the way. So as you read today, you're going to find out do you find out more about the kids going to find Princess Kia, or do you find more about um, Galen going to Jaffa City to fight off the Nins? Okay, so you look in your Google Doc to touch base and see what you're going to be writing about today after you read Chapter 7, but pay attention to see if there's any more problems. Also, friends, I sent you an invitation in your email, so please check your email. Tomorrow on Thursday, we are going to do a book club discussion, just like we would do when we finish a book in my room where we sit in a circle, but we'll all be looking at our Chromebooks and talking instead. Um, and I want you to be ready to talk about some of the problems and talk about the characters and make predictions about what you think will happen. Okay? And we'll use all of our book club language like we normally do. I respectfully agree. I respectfully disagree. Um, but just to listen and talk about the book and also ask any questions if there's anything that's really confusing to you because there are some confusing parts. So happy reading today. Enjoy chapter seven. And I look forward to your responses as you pay attention to the problems and how they try to solve these problems in the book. Talk to you soon.